Hi and welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we'll understand what the Spring Factory Bean is and we'll also understand some of the concepts that are uh, fundamental to Spring. Uh, you know, in the first tutorial, I told you that, uh, you know, when you talk about Spring, the first thing that normally comes to mind is dependency injection. And uh, the whole uh, dependency injection concept is possible because the Spring is actually a container of beans and spring behaves as a factory of beans. Now what do I mean by a container? Now say uh, you take an example of a servlet container, for example Tomcat is a servlet container. Now, what does that mean? Tomcat creates the servlet objects which are required in order to run an application. So you would uh, say you're deploying an application, what you would do is you would configure all the servlets in an XML and you would supply the classes. Now what Tomcat does is it reads the XML and then it identifies what are the servlets that needs to be instantiated and then it creates those servlets. So Spring, it's something similar. It's a container, but it's not a container of servlets. It's a container of beans. So pretty much any POJO that you have can be contained inside a Spring container. So you can have uh, a spring container and inside this you can have as many number of objects as you want and then all these are managed by the spring container managed in the sense it handles the instantiation of those objects it handles the whole life cycle of the objects and it handles the destruction of those objects you can of course have objects outside of the container as well in your application but adding the objects inside the spring container so that spring manages the objects gives you a whole lot of advantages. Now what are the advantages of having our objects inside the spring container? We will have a look at that in the subsequent tutorials. But uh, the point here is that we are learning spring and we are implementing spring in order for spring to manage our object life cycle. Now, in order for Spring to manage your object life cycle, say I have this object here and I want Spring to manage the life cycle, it's obvious that Spring needs to have a handle on this object. Spring needs to own this object. It needs to know what that object is and where it is. The way it works is the creation of the object is actually done by Spring. Now, say I have an object here that's dependent on this object. Okay. Normally, if you're not using Spring, what you would do is you would say, let's call this object A and let's call this object B. Okay. Inside the code of object A, you would say object B equals new object B. So I'm creating a new object inside this object. Now, if I do that, the new object that gets created is not handled by the Spring container because that's something that you're creating here. Spring doesn't know that that object exists. So the way the objects are created by the Spring container is instead of creating, I want a new object, instead of writing the code that says, new object, what you would do is you would write code to ask the spring container to instantiate this object and then pass it to this object. So this is something called as a factory pattern. So let's have a quick look at what factory pattern means. Now again, I have the object here. Instead of creating a new object B, what I do is I make a call to another object which is a factory object. Now I have this object factory, which is again another Java object, but what this does is the whole job of this object factory is to create new objects and then hand it over to the object. It's analogous to an actual factory. Uh, the whole purpose of this is to produce objects. So now how does the object factory produce objects? What it does is it reads from a configuration it reads, it has probably has a configuration file somewhere or some data, metadata, which has details about all the objects that it needs to create. It's a blueprint for all the objects that this object factory has to create. So what this object factory does is it reads from this blueprint. And then this object will tell, hey, I need an object of such and such a specification. Now the object factory finds out what is the blueprint for that particular object specification. And then now the object factory knows what object needs to be created. So it's going to create this new object and then it's going to hand it back to the requesting object. So now this object has the object that it wants, but then it's not actually doing a new by itself. It's referring to the object factory and then the object factory creates this new object by reading from a configuration and then hands it back. So this is something that Spring does. We can use the Spring library 
in order to do this functionality. So how it would work in Spring is, Spring has a bean factory. It has an object called a bean factory. You can use the Spring bean factory in order to let Spring create new objects for us. So I would have an object here. Instead of calling a new, I would call, I would reference the bean factory. The bean factory would read from a Spring XML. We'll have to supply the XML file which contains all our bean definitions. The bean definitions are the blueprints here. So the bean factory creates a bean from this blueprint and then it makes a new spring bean. And then this spring bean is handed over back to the object. Now the advantage here is that since this new bean has been created in the bean factory, spring knows about it. Spring has a handle to this bean and then it manages the entire life cycle of that bean. So in this case, spring acts as a container for this newly created spring bean. So this is a high level overview of uh, how you can use a spring bean factory in order to create beans. So now we'll actually code the whole stuff here. So we'll have a main method here, which calls the spring bean factory. Okay. And then we'll have to provide a spring XML as well. So we'll define our bean, the bean that needs to be created. Uh, we'll define it in our spring XML and then we'll talk to the bean factory and say, Hey, bean factory, get me that bean. And now the bean factory is going to read this XML and give us the bean. So this is not really dependency injection yet. We are still using the basic factory functionality of the Spring uh, framework and we are getting a bean out of it. We have not started uh, doing dependency injection, but this is the first step.